really like your meme stuff, but all this this magic talk and astrology. Why, why do you care about that stuff? That's for girls, bro. That's exactly why I care about it. Because in truth, women are closer to the romantic reality that underlies the sick, sick civilization. Your interest in memes is indicative of far greater neuroses than I'm prepared to deal with. My romantic embrace of the world is the only way. You're a fool, sir. I'm going to say it's very likely that you are a fire sign. There could definitely be Leo in the chart. Am I close? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. All right. It might be... That's it. That's my guess. I'm not that good at guessing. What is, uh, what is the difference between fire and water signs? A fire... So both are passionate. One has passion that is expressed largely into the world fire sign is expressing out. They're burning up material. The water sign has passions, but they're generally running deep within. Thanks. I feel that way. Thank you. So I have a question. I have a tricky question. But, um, so I think Jesus was a misunderstood like uh, thinker and a rebel. Uh, and uh, over the years, he started becoming like this holy image. And people used to now think of him as some type of like God that is equal or in the same vicinity as God himself. And then I see that kind of happening now with Crowley where people think that he was some type of like divine being. Are you afraid that something like that could happen to you as a content creator? Where over the years, say not right now or even in your living time, but say a thousand years from now, if God see fit, you, your stuff prevails and you stay, sticks around. Would you be afraid of that becoming you, yourself? That's a great question, uh, and I think back to what Crowley says. He says, I don't want to father a flock of fools. Um, this, I think, is a, it's the greatest danger when the person is alive. I don't think it was a problem for Nietzsche at all. Crowley certainly did have more of it, and at times failed, you know, did embrace this this god manness. Um, I would say I'll be honest with you all. Certainly, I've I've uh, you know, as small as I am, the internet and people have a great way of inflating an ego. But one needs to keep it deflated, not not entirely deflated, but one needs to certainly check the ego to not, like Icarus, fly too high and be destroyed. So. Ideally, uh, no, I will not succumb to God madness. Right. But thank you. Right. I just want to thank you for, for gathering all of us today and for doing what you do. It's really important. Thank you. Right. So you'll have to forgive me. I haven't phrased this perfectly in my head, but so I'm going to have to just explain it as I go. But um, I sense a division here. And not necessarily a hostile one, not at all. But there's definitely people here who come from not like. I'm, 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 we're on opposite sides of the division, let's make that clear. Um, and that's not out of any form of hatred, of course, like, I'm trying to keep this simple. Um, but I am someone who was very much a scientist, if you will, right? Um, and I'm not, you know, science has limitations, right? But I still believe in rationalism and testable results. But you can't test everything, you can't test your life, right? There is no... We're never going to find that because it's just too ephemeral. You can't get a, a grasp on that. And I don't like the idea of pure scientific determinism. Um, so that's why I'm here. That's why I'm exploring memes and a little bit light, some light esotericism. And the question comes down to where do you draw the line specifically? Because you, 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 there's a lot of aesthetics of magic and so on. I see lots of ma mentions to this. Are you just drawing upon ancient knowledge? and uh, using just taking the ideas or is there a legitimate belief in some sort of spiritual force and when i say spiritual force that doesn't require like souls attached to bodies per se um there's a lot of nuance here that doesn't really need to be explained sorry um but where would you draw the line essentially and uh 
how many super if you're if you're going to believe in supernatural forces, how many of them are there, and how would you explain them? Uh, that's an excellent question. It's funny you bring up the divide. I find when I'm among very spiritual people, you know, even Blair makes this joke, you know, he has the outlook of the scientist, but he truly is spiritual. I have the outlook of a spiritualist, but I'm truly scientific. Um, when I am in discourse with very spiritual people, they're always appalled at my interest in making an established logic of magic, of spirituality. Uh, I do believe, ultimately, that the best parts of it are going to be proven scientifically. Likely, you know, hard, hard bet, but within 200 years, things like ESP, things like, you know, the human ability to perceive past the five bodily senses will be established, proven. It already has been to a degree. Um, so, as for a supernatural force that I believe in, I would say the closest thing, you know, what Blair and I have called vibe, which is a, a fun way of describing Wilhelm Reich's concept of orgone, Freud's concept of libido, what Jung calls psychic energy, um, the animating force, you know, which all spiritual schools agree on. I think that with time it will be objectively proven and uh, believed to be a science incorporated into all that we do. Uh, this is my hope. I also hope that there are even stranger forms of occultism and spirituality that form after many of the mysteries are unveiled. That there'll be even more bizarre things that we believe. Then leading to new and new, newer and newer mysteries. Exactly. So, Thank you. A fair um, how do I phrase this? So you talk a lot about uh, art and how it's one of the greatest pursuits to express ourselves. I just want to know, do you kind of make a distinction between ugly and beautiful art, or what's your, uh, how do you view art like that? Do you believe in like, uh, aesthetically, uh, objectively, uh, beautiful art, as they would say. Or, oh, right. Now this is a really difficult question. I have personal tastes, personal preferences that sometimes I would say I'm guilty of putting onto others, that I like to put my taste. Well, I think everybody with taste, to some degree, has a, a duty to establish it because it's, it's a skill. And I have a great appreciation for people who are far more skilled in determining what's uh, ugly and what's beautiful. I'm not very good at it, hence why I focused on memes <laughs> and, and ugly occultism. But no, I don't, I don't believe that there's necessarily an absolute objective reality to what is beautiful so much as I consider what has proximity to the divine or what has proximity to the ultimate profound parts of human nature to be beautiful. Sometimes it appears ugly, you know? There's very horrific things that are innate to us and innate to the gods that I think we have to consider beautiful. I'd say Nietzsche likely gives some of the best thoughts on this in The Birth of Tragedy. That's a lot of where I've drawn uh, my analysis of art from. Uh, if you don't mind me asking again, but uh... I, I, this sounds a little corny, but what do you find to be beautiful? Or what is one of the more beautiful things that you've ever seen in your life? Gustave Moreau's depiction of Jupiter. Gustave Moreau's depiction of Salome and John the Baptist are two that come to mind. Um, trivial or very popular now, but a book, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy, I think is profound. Uh, I find a great beauty in very ancient texts, in uh, the I Ching, in the Bible. I think they have longevity, so they're clearly in touch with the divine, and I find beauty in that. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Hi, Big Ben. Uh, I was listening to your talk, and uh, I would get, I would follow your train of logic with like a uh, connection between hieroglyphics and memes, or like uh, a search for longevity. Uh, and uh, I would follow you up until like, the ultimate point where you 
mentioned magic, and uh, I was wondering what would you would what you would say to the perhaps harsh personal criticism that uh, your connection to magic it just comes from an aesthetic wants for beautiful ideas and doesn't necessarily have physical like uh, relevance. You're here. Okay. Did I not magic use magic to bring you here? My, if these aesthetic ideas are merely aesthetic ideals and incapable of influencing material reality, which is the base idea that magic is not real. Magic is, in the most simple way, as Crowley describes it, the act of doing one's will. If I want something, and I do what it takes to get that, that is magic. Now that is as simple as blowing one's nose or turning the key to a car, but those are very, very simple forms of it. The question is how far can that chain of cause and effect go? How distant of a effect can I cause through the simplest means? And so it's a skill, it's a skill question. It's a matter of are you good at making things happen? Um, and do you know what it takes to make those things happen? And I, I think it would be, I'd be remiss to say that aesthetics have no influence. Clearly they do. <clears throat> I mean, you look at the tragedies of the 20th century, almost entirely aesthetically driven. Aesthetics are what made it happen. They are what survive it, what immortalize it. Um, without aesthetics, there is nothing. All right. I suppose I disagree with your premise, but uh, accepting your definition, I can, uh, I do agree. Thank you. Hello, I got a question. Have you ever got post nut clarity from a meme? Like, you look at a meme and it's just like, <laughs> funny at first, but it's just like, nah, it's not funny. <laughs> That's a great question. You know, sometimes I, I am collecting memes, or I guess back when I edited my videos, I collect memes. And I think, oh, this one's, a, this one's a banger. This is a funny one. And then, I'm looking through the video, and I realize, oh, that's going to get flagged. That's going to get flagged. The algorithm won't like it. So I'd say I, I, I've learned the skill of, like, gaining that clarity through force of the algorithm. Um, less. So, well, that's an interesting question. Quite, quite um, no, I'm not, I'm not a particularly guilty person. Thank you. Uh, just a, just a quick one. I didn't think about the quote from Crowley, um, uh, hopefully not going to get any words out of place here, but, uh, for pure will, uh, an assuage of purpose delivered from lust of results is in every way perfect. And I just wanted to ask, how can you, and you mentioned it in your, one of your previous answers, how can we go about you know, doing our will, achieving what we want, um, while, you know, having the unassuaged of purpose delivered from lots of results. Is it a mental trick, or is it more something, is it more a mindset that in the first place you must be in? It's a great question. It's a great question. I was talking about this with, with Alex Kazemi yesterday, about how does one transmute one's desires into something that we are not simply going to struggle for, to yearn for, to long for, but to create a life that will achieve it, which in many ways is giving up the desire. Um, and in many ways, we don't actually want the things that we want. I think very few people know what they want. They want feelings that they believe those things will give. And thus, they remain in this trap of desire, of desiring, and not forming a life capable of uh, gaining and acclimating these things that will, uh, in fact, make them happy or whatever. But there certainly has to be a detachment from the nodes. It has to be all. You know, you don't, you don't go one step into magic. You don't go one step into wanting, which is why, you know, it's, and it's, it's, uh, it's beautiful and it's human, but it's very human. Everybody who gets a tarot card reading, they ask, what about money? What about my job? Or what about a girlfriend? When am I gonna get a girlfriend? When am I gonna find a boyfriend? Is this the one? 
they're not forming a life suitable for those desires. Which is why they just want that. People who do magic, they do, oh, oh, I want a girlfriend. Oh, I want money. I want this, I want that. They don't. They don't really want that, and they're not doing the work of making a life capable of getting anything that they want. But this is a state of desire. This is a state of pleasure. The desire and the lack of uh, gaining. It's a, a constant, you know, tease and denial that the false magical mindset engages in. The true magical mindset is already assured of its will. Because it will happen. Wait, how do you do? Chris, I know your name. Two, I'm checking the fit. Nice Thank vest. You. Thank you. This leads into my question. Do you have an ethical framework for self-memeing your persona and parasocial relationships? Excellent question. Good friend Blair and I discerned vibe materialism, what we call it. And the question that I ask, the ethical framework, in, in, inspired, I'd say, by Reich, the student of Freud, is does it vibe? If I am doing this, if I'm showing this, is it vibing? Does it vibe? If it does not vibe, I don't do it. I try not to do it. I try to maintain, there is certainly a vibe of meme analysis. You know, I'm wearing a costume. You know, very few, of, I guess. Now, most of the, some of the people here know Chris. Um, and then some people know God Disc, you know, I, I've cauterized these flowing wounds of identity into distinct, uh, distinct places. Uh, distinctions of persona, distinctions of vibe, and each in that way has its own ethical framework. Hey Chris, I just want to hear your thoughts on Los Angeles. Uh, great question. A lot of us here are Natives, like me and my buddy here, so... Yes, any thoughts? I came to Los Angeles for the first time, January of last year, and I was immediately stricken, immediately stricken with it. I'd grown up on the East Coast, I'd spent my whole life on the East Coast. I'd been to New York many times, I'd lived in New York for times, and I have to say LA has been a far more exciting, rewarding experience there is a reason Aleister Crowley wanted to move here. There's a reason that Jack Parsons and Theosophists and Scientology and all these great magical systems set up shop in LA. There's a reason Hollywood moved from my home state of New Jersey, where Edison created it, to LA. Um, I like it. I agree with you, I because I just moved to LA uh, like six months ago, and uh, especially like Hollywood and everything, I think of like Disney and like movie magic, uh, it feels very magical, just saying, I feel like I've had a lot of like coincident things like happen, but I, w I was going to ask like sometimes I get into this framework of uh, perspective of seeing the world through like our civilization, and uh, like, I know you've talked a little bit about, like, AI and everything. I'm not, like, an insane, like, AI doomer. But, uh, I feel like, uh, technology has been, like, exponentially, uh, increasing, and we just don't really think about it as, as humans. And, uh, and technology is, is, it starts with, like, the tools, like, in 2001 A Space Odyssey, the beginning. And, um, it, with this technology, it's becoming more and more accessible to the person, like I have a drone now, I can do crazy things with that if, if I was radicalized or something, you know? And, um, I'm not, obviously, but um, I, I'm just curious, like, where is, an AI is the big question, it seems like it's the ultimate end point is what everyone thinks. I'm just curious, like, what you think uh, the role of technology with our uh, human civilization is right now, you know, in the future, maybe. To answer that, I think we have to think back to the oldest, and the creator, like you mentioned 2001, the creator of the weapon in, in a Christian mythology is Tubal-Cain. Tubal Tubal-Cain is a descendant of Cain. He's the first to make weapons, but it's clear, it's in his blood, that the potential 
of technology as a extension of human drives as an extension of human abilities was already in the slaying of abel by cain the you know which is what 2001 is saying um everything that can happen has already happened in many ways i don't foresee ai i i'm i'm pretty indifferent to ai honestly i don't i'm not impressed by it and i don't think it will have that drastic of an effect i could be completely wrong i've said this about other things i was wrong about so uh it just <laughs> it doesn't impress me uh, because i think very few people and very few organizations have like we talked about the, the longevity you know for, so long as we're focusing on a viral ai it won't have longevity i think there'll be far more dangerous and greater tools that will occur thank you awesome thank you now i'm sure all of you know my my mantra my motto memes matter